Hello everybody, my name is Marlo and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a super smelter building in Minecraft. Before we begin, this is a full resource list of all of the items that we're going to be using in the build today. The first four rows are for the building surrounding the super smelter and the bottom two rows are for the super smelter itself. So we start off with all of the dark oak variants that we're going to be using and on the second row we have all of the spruce variants that we're going to be using and then the third row is just the rest of the main building blocks and on the last row here we just have a couple of miscellaneous items. We're then going to be using some polished and the site for the main building blocks of the super smelter and all of these are just the different components that are going to go into making the smelter itself. So we're going to start off by building the super smelter and covering it up afterwards and as you can see here I've gone ahead and dug myself two trenches. They are three blocks apart, one block deep and nine blocks long. Now when you're digging these out you want to try and build them so that when you're looking at them like this you are facing either west or east. If you happen to be facing north or south it doesn't matter you can still build the smelter it's just going to make placing in the rails a little bit less tedious but you can still do it either way so it doesn't really matter I'm just saying it's going to be easier if you can see either west or east but once you've got the trenches in place you can then pick where you want the front of the building to be mine is going to be this side and we're going to go to the back of the trenches here and get rid of these three blocks we can then come to the right hand side trench and get rid of two more blocks on the end here and replace it with a double chest just like that. And then from this double chest, crouching as we do this, we want to make a continuous line of hoppers so that they're all pointing into each other. So just make sure you're actually placing them on the hopper, not on the ground, for example. So you want to do that all the way along until you eventually reach the end of the trench on the left hand side. And then we can start next to the double chest here. We're going to have eight furnaces on this side and it should take you all the way to this point. And then we're going to do the same amount on the other side. So we end up with a 16 furnace array in total. We can also go ahead and place in another double chest this side for the sake of symmetry. It's not connected to anything, but it's just a nice bit of extra storage. So now we can come to one of the sides here and facing the back of the furnaces, we're going to have an upside down polished andesite stair with a full block on top and then three blocks just like that. We can then have another three blocks right here with one more on top, just like so. And then if we just come back round to the front, we're going to have a slab on this block. And then we can grab our full blocks once again and we're just going to get rid of these three dirt blocks as well as the two underneath the chest and we're just going to replace all of them with polished andesite to make it look a little bit neater. And I should probably say as we're doing all of this on the right hand side super smelter we also want to be doing it on the left. They are exactly the same so as I do it on one side just copy it around here too. Go ahead and stick a lever on this top andesite block and we're just going to have a redstone dust behind it. Now we can grab our hoppers and crouching once again. We just want to place eight of them in the back of all of the furnaces here. So make sure they're all facing into the side and not once again into the ground. We don't want that. And then we're going to make them all from the top side just go directly down into the furnaces. So it should look like this. Once we've got that done for both of the sides we want to come around to the back of the smelter here and next to these two top hoppers we're going to have two full andesite blocks with three slabs in between. Then next to the bottom hoppers we're going to have two full blocks and then a line of blocks going all the way across like this. And then we can also go ahead and fill in this block here as well as this one here. And to cover up these three hoppers, we're going to have a smoker with a blast furnace either side. It's not exactly going to be hooked up to the super smelter, but if you need to smelt some ores or some food, you can use these and it will still be connected to the hopper chain down below. So all of your items will end up inside of this chest. Facing the front of the smelter here, we want to turn to the left hand side because this is where the front of the rail is going to begin. So we're going to start off by having a powered rail on the top level with a regular rail and then we want to have a long line of powered rails until we reach the corner. Then we're going to have a regular rail, three more powered rails, another regular rail and then bring these powered ones all the way over until we reach this lever over here. 
we can then do pretty much the exact same thing below it. So we're going to have a powered rail here, then another regular one, and then some more powered rails again until we reach the corner. And you can probably figure out where we're going to go for the rest of it here. We're just going to have solid power rails to make sure we're not going to lose on any speed. So it should look like this from above. So if you're building the smelter facing west or east, you should find it super simple like I've just set up there. If you're building it facing north to south, you may be experiencing some problems. So I've set up a bit of a replica here, as you can see, and it just makes rails a bit more tedious doing it this way. So we got our top level in and that is absolutely fine. It's only when you start placing rails next to them where it gets a little bit more tricky. So I'm going to recommend what you do is actually start on one of the corners over here and then we're going to work our way backwards with the powered rails until we get to here, regular rail. And then something like this will probably happen. So you may have to just play around with the blocks here. So maybe lower this one down, break these two rails, do something like that and then get this one in place. And then you can put this block back where it should be. So that's kind of how you do it for this section. Then we'll just work our way around the back and it all should be fine basically until we get to the very end where it starts messing up like that again. So we just want to break these, send it on this way a bit. It, it may keep happening. It is quite infuriating sometimes. But as you can see there, you eventually are able to get it worked out. It used to be a lot more tricky than that. Believe you me, they actually improved the mechanics of that if you can believe that <laughs> but yeah that's how it works if you are building it north to south the next thing to do is to grab some full polished andesite blocks and starting off at the redstone dust here we want to add a long line of full blocks just behind the top level of rails there and above the bottom level going all the way around until we reach the other redstone dust over here but we need to go ahead and power these rails so the first thing we're going to do on this top block here in the middle, we're going to go ahead and stick a lever. That's going to power the back section here. Then if we just go around to the right hand side or the left, I should say, and we count across from this top block, one, two, three, four, five. And on the sixth block, we want to go ahead and stick a lever here and power it. Same again on the other side, just making sure they're on the same block. Now, you're probably wondering why we have this lever and redstone here. Well, it's kind of just for symmetry because as you can see, that is all of the rails powered. If you were to just power this lever, it's not going to quite reach the one or two at the end here. So this really is just for symmetry purposes. You can go ahead and get rid of it if you don't want to. But I like the idea of having two levers just opposite from each other. You can even flick this one on. It's not going to make a difference. Just make sure you flick this back one on first. Otherwise, you're going to end up with those last two rails unpowered. So that is the super smelter all done. We can now go ahead and place in our two minecart chests on these two powered rails, the ones next to the regular rails. And this top chest here is for your smeltable items, so sand in this case. And the bottom chest here is for your fuel source, so I'm using coal. If this is the first time running it, I'm going to recommend you just send it around with only the fuel first, just so we can get some fuel in the furnaces so that when we put our smeltable items in with the sand here, it can actually just start smelting it right away. So you can see they all very nicely and satisfyingly light up. And then if we just wait a little bit, we should end up with two stacks of glass in this chest. And when the smelting is done, as you can see, all of the furnaces should go off like that. To turn the smelter off and to stop the carts, we just flick the lever, they stop back here at the station, and there is our two stacks of glass, ready for collection. So when it comes to making the building around the smelter, the first thing we're going to do, like I am here, is to place a dark oak log on all of the corners, just like that. And then we can bring all of those up by one, two, three, and four more blocks for a total of five. And then round the front of the build here, we just want to bring out one extra horizontally like that and then also do the same around the back. Now we can just stay around here at the back of the build and we're going to start on the roof. So the first thing we're going to do is have a dark oak stair on the outside of the log as well as one above it just like this. We can then have an upside down stair just on the back of it with a dark oak trap door in front and on top. Same again on this side. And yes, mine look a little bit different. It's just my custom resource pack. But then we can go ahead and have a slab on top of that trap door with a full block beside it and a stair upside down in the middle. So we get something like this. We can then have a dark oak slab underneath that log on both of the sides and then a stair just placed down like that. And then we're going to alternate between trapdoors and slabs all the way across until we reach the other side over here. 
and then underneath the stairs and all of the slabs we're going to have another trap door and we should end up with something like this at the moment and lastly we're going to have one two and three dark oak slabs you can then do the same around the front of the build too with the exception of a couple of blocks that are different but i'll show you what they are now so all we want to do very simply is break this trap door and replace it with two dark oak fences and we're also going to get rid of these two slabs and replace them with two upside down stairs and underneath them we can have another three dark oak fences just like that we can then come up to the top of the build here where we're going to have a dark oak trap door above that upside down stair and then we're basically just going to alternate between slabs and trap doors until we eventually reach the other side over there where you should find you end up with another trap door that's a slab a trap door <laughs> on top of that stair once again so that is the top of the roof we can then come to one of the sides here and very simply we're just going to have a line of stairs going all the way across from one side to the other just like that and then we're going to have dark oak trap doors starting on the outer block and just leaving a gap in between all of them until we get to the other side just like this and you can then copy what we've done at the bottom here round to the other side too. As for filling in the rest of the roof, we're going to be using some spruce blocks and it's pretty simple. Basically from this dark oak stair, we want a line of spruce stairs going all the way across. From this full block, we want a spruce slab going all the way across. From this slab, a spruce slab and then this block is going to be a trap door. So we basically want this going all the way across to the other side on both of the sides of the roof. So now we can come round to the front of the build and we're just going to fill in this wall. So what we're going to do is start off with a line of stone brick blocks on this row, just like that below the dark oak slabs and stairs. And then we're going to have a line of three blocks just behind the dark oak fences. And then in this gap we're going to have a stone brick stair and an upside stone brick stair on either side, just like that. We can then go ahead and grab some barrels and we're just going to go to the inside here and we basically just want to place in some upside down barrels or regular barrels facing upwards it doesn't matter basically we want the side texture on show not the front or the back texture like that so just make sure they're all placed down and looking like this so from the outside it should look something like that which is a very nice texture i do like using that one quite a bit but then we're going to grab two dark oak buttons and place them here and here for no apparent reason other than it's just a little bit of detail. And then we can grab some spruce stairs and we're going to have four here, here, here and here in all four of the corners. And then we're going to have two trap doors on the side, one at the top and one at the bottom just to make this sort of round entrance way into the super smelter itself. And now if we just want to come around to one of the two longer sides here and we're going to grab our dark oak planks and from this top log we're just going to have a line of those going all the way across just to extend the edge of the roof here. And we're then going to grab some dark oak logs and where we have this lever we're going to have two underneath it and one more on top so if you just place it on the bottom of that plank that is fine we can then go ahead and one block away from this outer pillar have four more logs just like this on either side and then in line with this lever here so behind the andesite blocks we're going to have four horizontal logs just like that so we should have a pattern that looks like this then we're going to go ahead and place in four stone brick walls on these two sections right here. And then lastly, just to cover up the lever, we're going to stick down a spruce trap door. Next up, we can go ahead and grab our stone brick stairs. And we're going to have a regular one on the bottom here of this one wide section and an upside down one at the top. And then just add in two spruce fences in the middle. And we can do the same over here too. We can then go ahead and come to these two sections in the middle where we're going to have two full blocks on the bottom corners like that with two stairs in the middle and then two upside down stairs in both of the corners just like that and then lastly two slabs in the center here just to make a nice little window so you can see the rail carts moving along from the outside. So this is what one of the sides looks like so you can now copy it round to the other side too.
We're going to do a similar thing around the back of the build here and we're going to start off with two four dark oak logs underneath the lever there and we're going to have one two and three above it of course if you're placing it down like that make sure you're crouching otherwise you're going to just turn the lever off so next to these two dark oak logs at the top is where we can have ourselves some more barrels so that's just six on either side just make sure you are placing them facing downwards and not like that it can be a little bit tricky but you should be able to just stand on this rail and be absolutely fine and then if i just head around the long way because i've shut myself in we can continue doing some stuff so what we're gonna do is have three horizontal logs next to the levers once again and then another trap door in front of it we're gonna have three full blocks this time instead of walls just above it and then we can have two more full blocks in each of the corners just like that a stair in the middle upside down stair in the corners and a single slab at the top there just to make some more windows the last step for the exterior of the build is to add in some chimneys to the roof so we're going to be building four in total two on this side and two on the other side so what we want to do from this dark oak trap door we're going to count in one two three and on the fourth spruce trap door break these two as well as the two slabs above it and then we can do the same over here so those two and those two and then the same round this side as well and once you've got all of those broken i'll show you how to make the chimneys so what we're going to do is start off with four brick blocks just like that to replace the blocks we've just broken and two more above it then we're going to have four brick walls and then four more full blocks to get this shape we can then go ahead and place in four campfires on top of those full blocks and then we just want to add in eight spruce trap doors to surround all of the campfires to make ourselves a smoking chimney and you can do exactly this three more times to fill in the other three holes now i can see why some of you may not want to add this to your build they are quite big and bulky and you may just prefer the roof without them so if that is the case just go ahead and skip over this bit and leave the roof as it is but i personally love them i think they add a lot to the build the smoke particles produced by all of those campfires really make it seem as though something is cooking up on the inside which after all is kind of what's going on there is a super smelter inside of there so as i said that's all the work we need to do on the x area we can now head inside and start some work here so the first thing we're going to do is sort out the ceiling because it's a little bit of a mess at the moment and we're going to start by placing in some full dark oak planks going all the way across from one side to the other on the top row here in the middle and then we're going to go ahead and count one two and three blocks in and have two chains and a lantern on both of the sides just like this and then come to the middle block here so line yourself up with that log and we're going to place in two more chains and a lantern which will nicely light up all of the inside and as for the section below the dark oak slab we're going to go ahead and place in some upside down spruce stairs just in front of the dark oak planks here and then we're going to go ahead and have a slab here and here and just bring them all the way over until we eventually reach the other side having a little bit of trouble with placement here but if we just bring these all the way over and once you've got this done as you can see here i've gone ahead and copied it around to the other side too which is what you then need to do next and that will complete your ceiling as for the floor well we're gonna go ahead and get rid of all of the blocks that are currently there grass in my case but there may be stone or something else just go ahead and get rid of them all and what we're gonna do is have three lines of stripped dark oak logs all facing the same way going in a direct line until we eventually reach the full blocks here at the start and very simply that's what we need to do for the floor and the very last thing to do is just add some extra storage up here on this top shelf if you need it you probably won't considering half of the build is made out of barrels already but i just think that's a nice spot for some chests and some sideways barrels so you got this to store in whatever you could possibly need for this room but that everybody is now the super smelter complete so that everybody is the tutorial all done i really hope you enjoyed watching thank you ever so much for doing that and i will see you in the next video Bye for now.